for those of you who have uh, are new to the show, this might be your first time seeing him here, but it's very likely that you've heard of uh, Joey Holtz before. Joey Holtz, about a year ago today, went viral with a labor shortage experiment that was covered in Business Insider. You might know him as the Florida man who did an experiment and applied to 60 jobs, landing just one interview. That was the first phase of a continuing labor study, a sort of grassroots labor study that he has done. And uh, he's been a guest on our show many times since. Joey Holtz. Joey, it's great to see you again, man, and it's great to see that you're safe down there. Yeah, it's good. It's good to be back on with you guys. It's uh, it has been a while, and you know, I was I was one of the lucky few uh, who has come through the storm okay. You know, a lot of it's um, a lot of people got a lot of a lot worse than I did. Yeah, well, let me set this up for those who don't know. Joey lives in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, the wreckage down there after Hurricane Ian is just unthinkable. Um, you showed me some images that I'm going to put up on the screen later just to give everybody an idea of this. But you are sitting outside on a fallen tree now, as I understand it, correct? Uh, yeah, I'm getting the best signal from this tree. So if you see me, like, slide off the side, it's, it's only like three or four foot to the ground. But, uh, you know, we were lucky that it didn't fall the other way. There's a – it's a – but the lighting's good out here. It's great, and and you're outside for good reason. You are housing people in your home, right? People who had no place to go after the storm hit. Uh, they're they're in your house, getting showers, getting food, getting water, all that stuff, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's actually uh, it's not it's not even my house, and it's you know I'm 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 more than happy. They they've been so helpful to me, and once our power and water came back on, uh, we we opened our doors to just. Uh, anyone who is still without water and power in the area that we know and it's been you know it's 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 been good to have people around finally it's been sort of rough with the, the you know the well system the power powers the water so with no power there's no water here and it's uh it's a lot yeah, so talk to me about this storm. I was talking to you offline earlier that, you know, maybe it maybe it's because I don't consume media much anymore, at least not mainstream media. I, I never watch the news on TV anymore. Um, but, you know, I remember after uh, Katrina hit, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2005, that was the talk of the nation for weeks and weeks afterwards. When Sandy hit in 2012, that was the talk of the nation for weeks and weeks afterwards. It sort of upstaged the presidential uh, vote that happened just basically a week after Sandy hit. Um, that was the talk of the country. And I don't feel like this is. It, it, I, once again, that could be just a subjective experience on my part because I don't watch the news anymore. I watch media that's curated to me online. Um, but I don't know if people have become desensitized to these storms because they've become so common. But this seems to be bigger than all of these. This seems to be the biggest one in quite some time. You were talking to me. This is probably the biggest one since Andrew, which was 1992, you told me, right? Uh, yeah, and and if you look at the chart of them as far as the amount of damages, uh, Andrew's Andrew's barely even in the top ten. I would even say it's it's now after this, it's not even in the top ten anymore. But uh, to my personal experience, I was I was eight years old in Homestead, which was Ground Zero in a trailer park for that. Uh, so that was that was thirty years ago this year. We celebrated the anniversary of that on the on the twenty fourth of August, and since then, like. The FEMA response times have gone up like the the news cycles have shortened immensely, you know, so the the experience as a kid in that and it's like, you know, nowadays a kid one day inside with no power seems like forever. But as an eight year old in a tent for 10 months after this storm, right, where we're still to this day like that was that was one of the uh longest and so, like they got people as quick as they could they did what they did but the infrastructures that fema has now uh i don't know there's a chopper flying over uh the infrastructures that fema has right now are so much more timely than what we had before before andrew the florida building codes didn't exist all these things that that protected a lot of uh homes and lives all things considered but the Fort Myers Beach was wiped literally off off the map, but like you mentioned those images earlier, it's it's uh 
it's a huge contract. The beach has overtaken the, the roads. Uh, I have friends that died. I won't mention them on here. I still know whose families have been notified, but I've already gotten reports. Uh, and I think the last official death toll I saw was in the 60s or 70s. And uh, and I'm, I'm sort of shielded from that. I'm on like the opposite side of I-75 where uh, the storm surge didn't reach uh, where we're at. So we got uh, we got the Cat 4 hurricane winds and we got the edge of that. The South Cape Coral area, Fort Myers Beach, Sanibel Causeway, completely collapsed and there there was people on those islands there were people on boats out there i had friends on boats in key west that that are that are missing now like it's uh and this is an ongoing thing that you know i'm I'm not sure what the outside news cycle is like too like you said uh i didn't even have strong internet signal or any cell signals in the area until yesterday around four or five p.m and then you know as soon as we started getting a hold of people and hearing that come in like you know, we're like, we have power and water, come shower, come eat food, whatever you need. We have AC, uh, you know, come together and, and, and help each other out. Yeah, I want to show these images um, that you sent me here. Um, these are pretty extraordinary. So this is a before picture from, I guess, a Google Earth type satellite image. Yeah, I pulled um, it from Google Maps. You pulled it from Google Maps. So that's before the hurricane. And then uh, the after photo, this is the exact same area. Um, This is what that looks like now. Yeah, and that's uh, that's Times Square, Fort Myers Beach. That was uh, there was a pier there. There was a a line of restaurants in that lower left corner. It was, uh, you know, there was there was. There was human habitation there uh, less than a week ago. Wow. And that's so, that's one of uh, that's that's one of several areas. There's a there's an island north of here called Pine Island uh, that the bridges are washed out of. Montlaca is uh, pretty washed out. Uh, Sanibel Captiva, pretty much our entire line of barrier islands. And that's just that's just here in Lee County. And we're one of several florida counties affected not to mention it went and hit south carolina i haven't even heard what happened there yeah i mean you're just probably coming back online you know when when a thing like this happens you don't even really know the extent um of the damage because you're offline right i mean there's no way to get that information really yeah and when i and when i was when i was out in the area where there was internet uh i was i was working the whole time so i didn't i didn't even have a chance to catch my breath or or reach out or respond to most messages and then i at least got to read through uh you know the and and send some texts off it was you know the further inland you went the better things were to an extent russell did you have anything uh, yeah, so a lot of the news coverage on this, um, as predictably focused in on uh, trivia, but Don Lemon, who's having a very bad month, uh, brought up the climate change issue, was actually shut down by a meteorologist. And fairly enough, because the meteorologist was very concerned about the horrible thing that was about to happen to Florida and just wasn't into interested in getting into spinning it into any particular agenda. And finally, really shut down Don Lemon, almost yelling at him like, you can't demonstrate that climate change is responsible for any particular hurricane. We can't say that this one is because of climate change. But clearly, Joey, living in that region of the country, far be it for me to defend Don Lemon. But being from I- that part of the country... As you're saying, Andrew was the biggest news story in the world at that time because it was not even top ten now. Right, it was unusual. So, so yes, maybe you can't say about any one particular weather event that it's climate change, but you can certainly say there's a pattern of increasingly intense and constant hurricanes to the point that. It's not even a huge news story anymore. I, I think th- I think the 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 story that came out of this that got the most exposure was the shark swimming through the neighborhood. Everybody saw that video. I don't I don't even know if you saw it because you're actually in the middle of this disaster. Yeah, uh, but- I. 
I, I didn't. Uh, I, I actually did finally today when all the people and kids were over, you know, uh, I saw I did see that one finally. I, I have an image I saw where someone's sliding glass door is up to, you know, where my shoulder height would be is the ocean on the outside of it. Right. And, right and things right. like that. And then and then that one image I shared of uh, there's a set of three pictures I sent you guys down the street from that Times Square. I used to deliver produce to this bar. Right. And then and then the only piece of it left is the word junk from their sign. They used to be called junk anew. <laughs> and and and. And it's 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 absolutely mind blowing. I went to I went to elementary school on that beach, and it's uh, and it's just this happens. We had two thousand four, two thousand five, four hurricanes, four hurricanes. We had a was it two thousand seventeen? We had three complete hurricane disasters. Uh, I was looking at the uh, it wasn't the climate report. It was the 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 threats report. I want to say it is. I. I should have emailed that too. I was just in the middle of reading that when I logged in with you guys. Uh, but when you look at how long it took to recover from each storm on this chart, as it goes, uh, Andrew was like, there was, it was like a 10 to 12 year span, but everything that happened in the past, say 12 to 13 years, while we were still just finishing recovering from Andrew in places as a, as, as a state, the entire, every other storm that had happened was still under recovery efforts in those areas in some ways. Like, when the Irma news cycle was over and everyone else was like, oh, Key West must be fine now, like Big Pine Key and and, and Marathon and all those places, th those houses were gone. They didn't just pop back up after three weeks, right? Like this is it's it's anywhere from, you know, years and years of rebuilding and the amount of people homeless is is and and they have lost all of these things. It's it's going to be astronomical to recover from financially. Uh, and and emotionally as people, right? Like I've, I've I've got PTSD from Andrew when they just keep piling these things on me. It's you know sometimes I handle it well, sometimes I don't. Like I've been a manic mess for a week. <laughs> wow. wow, you lose sleep, you lose uh, track of time, you you know you lose a sense of safety, and it's it's uh, you know as normalcy comes back. It's a whole different thing. Then you have the fist fights over pub subs, right? You have you have people brandishing guns at each other in lines over gasoline. And then, you know, these are the these are the little stories that get out there to the bad stuff. But for mm -hmm. every one of those you see, you've got the neighborhood feeding each other and, and helping each other out. So and they don't I, I do like that I've seen and it maybe, you know, it's it's a change in the way they report things, but seeing the ways that they're helping highlight the community coming together as opposed to you know fetishizing the violence of the of the divisive issues that happens yeah i mean that that's a good point and obviously in the coming weeks um you're going to start to see the aftermath which is when you know stories come out like the ones you talked about and it's also when people um hopefully at least um get enough of their lives back that they start paying attention to um you know how good a job is being done uh to help rebuild not only in their community but elsewhere throughout the state i mean the thing about florida is it's a long narrow state and so like this this storm obviously you know hit your area extremely hard but it also hit the east coast of the state extremely hard all the way up to tampa yeah, it went some people up in straight tampa. across yeah i mean they you know so this is just going to be a gargantuan uh relief effort that's going to take real coordination um and it's going to be a real test for ron DeSantis heading into a governor's race that you know people don't necessarily know this because they assume since he's going to run for president this he's a shoe in to be um, re-elected as governor, but, you know, Florida still, as much as it's trended red, it's still, you know, a relatively what we would call a swing state. Charlie Crist is within about five points. So what do you think? I mean, it's it's hard to, to think about this now, I'm sure, um, because you're, you, you don't know yet. You just got online this afternoon. But what are your expectations about that, about how this could affect your, your you know, wannabe superstar governor there? When when I was preparing for the storm, you know, it was the first time that I ever told someone, shut up. I'm busy watching Ron DeSantis speak. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're, yeah, they're you're not, you're I not needed, signed up for the campaign. I know, but I need no. I needed I needed the information that was coming from them because the, the storm people were taking seriously. And so 
I was listening to see if he'd say anything useful. And after he spouted off his corporate endorsement things, I guess he, he, he mentioned Expedia like three times, I think. So he must have a deal with them or whatever. Uh, the, gas buddy app actually ended up being real useful you know users reporting where gas is located uh you know people are running life-saving equipment on generators the health park hospital here is that their water's gone they're they have patients shitting in bags uh according to the uh nbc2 news reporters uh i don't know how you never know what parts of this are like from just local and what's going national on that but it's it's been a whole I needed the information from that. Once the weather people came on after him and the emergency manage- management officials, you know, and they, they gave the actual info you needed when you couldn't, couldn't call 911. Once the winds reach nine, uh, 45 miles per hour, the police aren't coming to you. The ambulances can't come to you. And then uh, in the reaction to this storm, the governor's race is very much going to depend on how well the, the voters are, A, given access to, to reach the polls when it happens and b uh what he did to actually help floridians because you know we we all know that politicians love hearing themselves talk and and until they do the things i don't give a flying fuck and i'm never gonna vote for him but i want i want in my heart i hope that this government that is supposed to help us and in a situation like this and they have all these systems we spend these billions of dollars for preparedness for this right I really hope that all of that's going to be utilized effectively to return the, I think it was almost a million people without power in, in the area where I'm at at first. And they're, they're getting them on slowly, but the friends coming in, they said the linemen on their street said it's going to be two to four months before they're to this. Like there's entire sections of the grid completely wiped out. I'm actually a mile and a half from where all the linemen are staging. So I'm watching, you know, I can hear the trucks going in now all day. You can see them working on the stuff out there. That's probably, you know, if they're, if they started here and they're working their way towards the coast, then I might've just lucked out from, from proximity, right? Like first stop. Oh, Hey, we're not going to all drive past that down line. So let's just get that out of the way sort of deal. Uh, but they've been doing what they can but any place that's not on city water, well water, that runs on power, right? If you do something uh, with your well system or something happens with it while the power's out, you aren't a plumber. You can't get it to work again after the storm, right? And then so you have you have disease, you have mosquitoes, you have uh, the, the lack of sanitation equipment when there's a boil water notice. How are you supposed to sanitize stuff? If you, like, it's every protocol changes in this yeah. situation. Yeah. That's why, you know, I didn't think of it that way, but that's absolutely true. Russell, go ahead. Were were you going to say something? Well, this is part of the problem with having a schmucky governor, because, of course, he wants aid and, of course, you should get it. But a lot of people are pointing out when he was a congressman, he voted against aid for New York and New Jersey in the aftermath of Sandy. Um, You know, the people of Florida should not suffer for that. But, of course, that's coming up now. That now that there's a hurricane in Florida, of course, he wants that aid, and I'm I'm sure he'll get it. Um, but there's going to be a conversation around that that you wouldn't have had if it wasn't this governor asking for it, DeSantis. Well, the interesting uh, thing about that is, I mean, Chris Christie, when Hurricane Sandy hit, that was days before the Romney versus Obama vote. Yeah, And yep. there was wide speculation that Chris Christie was actually going to run against Obama that year. He ended up not doing it. Um, but Christie was the keynote speaker at the RNC that year. And then a week before the country is set to vote. Sandy hits, and Christie, you could tell, just threw Romney right under the bus. He goes up to Obama, he starts hugging him and shaking his hand. Thank you, Mr. President. That was very infamous, yeah. Because he was clearly thought, okay, Romney's not going to win anyway. I'm going to run in 2016. Now's my chance to look like I'm this great leader who's willing to extend an olive branch to my Democratic nemesis president who I almost ran against. And part of him was probably thinking, God damn it, if I had run against him this time, I may have won because this hurricane is hitting. Five days before, people could have been uh, wanting to vote for me if I do a good job, right? So there's all kinds of things like that. Um, But, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a real test for him. And obviously, you know, we want Florida to get all the aid that that it needs. I mean, this is an absolute humanitarian disaster. All right. So let's – You got to wish him him luck there. Yeah, I – 
I Let's want see. him to succeed so badly. I, I I want him to be good at this. Show show me show me that you're not full of shit, guy. Like, <laughs> right? I mean, the country. The same thing when uh, um, COVID hit. We all wanted Trump to do well. We all wanted Trump to lead us through it. Whether Did I believe it was going to happen? Well, Trump? no, we got what we got, but. No, you know, and I, the, I wish that you might be in for a similar thing down there with this guy. But, yeah, you know, we'll see. I mean, the thing now is this is happening. I mean, if there's any if there's any bright side to the timing of this is that this is happening a month before people are going to have to go vote for him if he wants to win. And the polls are not that that uh, tight, but they're also not a runaway like it is conceivable he could lose. If he bo- if he botches this, um, so let's course, uh, let let let's take a look it. at the uh, at the land shark. As yeah, Russell sat- has the shark. As, oh, we pulled as, up. We as, pulled as, up the land shark. As an old Saturday Night Live fan, you don't see this every day. You don't see the actual land shark every day. Yeah, my wife Amanda showed that to me last night. That's it right there. Yeah, a little fin. I mean, swimming. these are the images that everybody said was, you know, were going to become commonplace, right? Yeah, it's uh, it, a lot of Florida is at sea level. That's it's it's not any higher, uh, you know. In a lot of places, our beaches go right into it. It's it takes. This was a predicted twelve to eighteen foot of storm surge, is what what they were saying, and it kept tracking down. So we had this high predicted storm surge, which they they warned us about that for a while. But what Lee County, where I'm at, didn't expect was for the the storm to turn in here. For those people who expect the track to stay on a track, anyone who's watched these things happen a couple of times, it moves constantly. And and I'm I'm hypersensitive to those things. And, And we had 24 hours from evacuation notice on Fort Myers Beach where, you know, the water was high enough for sharks to swim on the road. I think this was Naples. Uh. And that storm surge covered hundreds and hundreds of miles up, up the coast. I don't know if it reached up to Hillsboro, but you know, this is this is one shark of, of thousands that were out there doing that thing. Like it's it's insane the 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 scope of this storm. Please clap.